the injury report from a Sunday slate in the National Football League, week number nine, and that Sunday slate now in the books. So we give you the injury insight and analysis with the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, live right here on this Monday on the early line. Dr. Chow, glad to have you here. Never easy talking about injuries, but we have to project moving forward. So we're glad to have you here on the early line to look back on the Sunday slate. Always happy to be here. Unfortunately, in the collision sport of football, there's always stuff. It's never just everything is good. Yeah. Yep, of course. Topics of conversation for sure. The, uh, as we look at what happened yesterday for the Dallas Cowboys, Doc, the injuries to the insult of dropping a third consecutive game and getting beat by the Falcons on the road in Atlanta. We start with the quarterback, of course. That is Dak Prescott. Exited the game early with a hamstring injury. The Cowboys saying he is set to undergo an MRI early this week dr chow from what you in the war room was able to see yesterday at sports injury central what do you think the prognosis is for dak prescott returning to the gridiron the hamstring is a big deal for him the hand not so much the cut on the hand and the swelling look the grips on the palmer side not the back side that's not an issue the hamstring is a big deal for a couple of reasons number one it's rare to injure your hamstring throwing the ball. It's more running. But when you do injure your hamstring throwing the ball, especially when it's your back foot, it is a key part of the throwing motion in terms of driving the ball downfield and accuracy. So it's not just about moving in the pocket or scrambling. It's about downfield accuracy. This is a huge deal for the Cowboys. Look, I think there's a reasonable chance that he misses the game. And if he plays, he's not going to be 100%. The only way he plays at near 100% is, oh, he felt something in the hamstring, but it was like spasm, and there's actually no damage on the MRI. In that case, then he would be fine. But right now, this is the biggest worry of the week right now in terms of certainly that big Eagles-Cowboys game. Way bigger worry than CeeDee Lamb. By the way, glad you brought that up. Perfect segue, Doc, because the Eagles do play the Cowboys this week, and we're talking about a pair of wide receivers. One in CeeDee Lamb left that football game late, checked out with a shoulder injury, but also A.J. Brown mysteriously took a hit before the half, Doc. I'm an Eagles fan. Can you start with A.J. Brown? Give me some good news, please, on A.J. <laughs> look, from the war room, we look at video. It was downfield. There was only one angle. We cannot be conclusive but we don't have any worry for serious, mm. significant season-ending injury or anything like that. We think it's a mild knee sprain. He may have got his MCL very mildly. Obviously, he did not return. It is a short turnaround to this week's game. Not impossible that he plays. He can run in a straight line. Cutting might be a little limited. The good news is A.J. Brown will be back, will be back quickly. Is it definite that he'll be back this week? remains to be seen, but the fact that the possibility is open is good. And I always like delivering good news. And so this one is relatively good news. Same with CeeDee Lamb. He heard it yeah. early in the game, stayed in the game, right AC joint sprain. That's been confirmed by media now. Look, everyone gets an MRI. He's going to get an MRI. MRIs are like, you know, candy at Halloween. Okay, everyone passes <laughs> it out. But we don't think there's going to be anything structural with his labrum or rotator cuff. He's going to play through maybe even with an injection now that they know there's no additional structural damage. C.D. Lamb, yes. A.J. Brown, maybe a chance. Dak Prescott on the dubious side. Yeah, the Eagles, because of all of that, Doc, a six-and-a-half-point road favorite at the start wow. for that huge divisional duel on Sunday afternoon. 43-and-a-half is the total for week number 10. Other wide receiver injury news. Let's go to Drake London. Caught a touchdown early yesterday for the Falcons in the win over the Cowboys and then left the game early with a hip injury. The Falcons continue to be the only team in the NFC South with a winning record. Divisional game for them upcoming in New Orleans on Sunday. Doc, what are the chances that Drake London able to suit up and play moving forward in Week 10? Drake London has a hip pointer. He, he fell on it on the touchdown catch, tried to stay in the game, ultimately left. Hip pointers get more sore over the time, over the course of the game. And it really depends on what he looks like today. If he walks in today limping and on crutches and has got more sore overnight, it's not going to happen this week. It all depends on what he looks like today when he hits the training room. We don't see this as long-term. Is this a week or two? It could be, but it's definitely not long-term for Drake London. 
Doc, let me squeeze one in on a concussion issue with Chris Olave in the New Orleans Saints yesterday. Yeah. Looked bad, got carted off the field. The reason I want to bring this up to you is getting concussions so close together. What does that mean for the rest of the season? And quite frankly, maybe Olave's career. Well, you make a really good point there, and that's what we said from the war room here. This is his second concussion in two weeks, and even last week when he didn't get a concussion, he got hit and, and got a head injury check. The rule of thumb is first concussion out a week, second concussion out a month, third season. Mm -hmm. Look, this is the second concussion in two weeks, his fifth in his career. He's going to miss at least four weeks is our belief on injured reserve, and at that point, the way the Saints have lost seven straight games, are we better off just shutting him down for the season? Uh, you know, so that's what's really on the table for him. Seven games skid for New Orleans. They just fired Dennis Allen this morning, midway through his third year. Not a good recipe right now in the Big Easy. Dr. Chow, one more game in week number nine. We go to Monday night in Kansas City, the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. We know about Tampa, of course, and their top targets. No Mike Evans, no Chris Godwin for tonight. Elsewhere, though, what's the health like for both of these teams entering the Monday night matchup? Well, you know, the, thankfully, you know, the health is on the rise. The Kansas City endured their share of stuff. They've got trades. They, yeah. you know, employ four tight ends. And, you know, they got a new running back. You know, all sorts of things. They've been shoring up to, and loading up. Uh, Tampa, not so lucky there. They're two main wide receivers, obviously, out. But in general, both teams heading a little bit up towards the upside. And obviously, you're seeing the big wide receiver issues there for uh, Tampa on the screen. And, you know, Pacheco might even make it back for the Chiefs come December. Not quite yet, but he's got a little more Ooh. ways to go. Hmm. We will talk about that. Kareem Hunt back with Kansas City has been very good in relief. Dr. David Chow, you saw the field views there. You can continue to see that at sixscore.com. That's S-I-C-score.com. Dr. Chow, as always, thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you.